Hello and welcome back. This video is about a concept called event propagation. We will also look at the skip method, which helps control the flow of events. My hope is that this video will save you from a lot of confusion moving forward. Let's get started. Here is the code from last time, minus the slider and the text control. Now we just have a panel containing a button and a status bar. When we click on the button, then on button clicked will be called and some text appears in the status bar. You might be surprised to learn that I don't have to call bind on the button itself. Let's try to call bind on the panel instead. As you can see, it still works. I can also call bind on mainframe itself. And that works too. What is going on? The answer is event propagation. As we have previously talked about, there is a parent child relationship here. Our button is a child of the panel, which is a child of mainframe. All WX command events and only those propagate up this hierarchy until they are handled. If nothing handles the event, then the app class gets the chance. In our case, when the button is clicked, it emits a command event, but we haven't registered an event handler on the button itself. So WX widgets will check for an event handler registered on the panel. It doesn't have one, so next it will check mainframe, and here we do have an event handler, which will be called. What happens if we have two buttons? Let's rename the button we already have to button one. And add another one called button two. I will also change on button clicked, so it displays a message in a box instead of in the status bar. If I click on button 1, we get this message box and same thing for button 2. On button clicked is called when either button is clicked. That's because the command events from the buttons propagate to mainframe. This could be useful if, say, you want to play a sound when any button is clicked. Let's add two more event handlers specifically for button 1 and button 2. I'm also going to rename this one to on any button clicked. Back in the implementation file, we will implement the two new methods. On button one clicked will display button one clicked in the status bar. And on button two clicked will display button two clicked. We will bind these event handlers directly on button one and button two in the constructor. Now what will happen when I click on a button? Let's try button 1 first. The status bar says button 1 clicked, but we do not get a message box. 
clearly on button one clicked was called, but not on any button clicked. If I click on button two, we get a similar result. On any button clicked is never called because the events are handled before propagation reaches mainframe. If we don't want the propagation to stop, we must call the events skip method. This tells WX widgets that propagation should continue, so something else also gets a chance to handle the event. If I click on this button now, both on button one clicked and on any button clicked is called in that order. And similarly for button two. The skip method actually has one more important application. Let's try to handle the WX EVT close window event which is emitted by WX frame when it is closed. First, we need to declare an event handler. Note that it must take a WX close event reference as parameter. We will implement on close in the implementation file. It should simply display frame closed in a message box. We will bind this event handler in the constructor. Note that I have called bind directly on the mainframe and for the event tag I have used WX EVT close window. Let's see if it works. If I click this close button, we see the message. But when I click OK, the window or frame doesn't actually close. So right now, this is a pretty annoying program. Why did the frame not close? It actually has nothing to do with event propagation. In fact, the WX close event doesn't propagate at all because it's not a command event. The frame doesn't close because we handle the event in our mainframe class, which is a subclass of WX frame. By default, if a subclass handles an event, the base class does not get to handle it as well. In our case, WX frame doesn't realize that we are trying to close it. To allow the base class to handle an event, we must call the skip method. If I try to close the frame now, we see the message, and if I click OK, the frame closes. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed this little demo about event propagation and the skip method. Last time I promised to cover mouse events, keyboard events and more, so that will be the next topic. See you soon.